Hey everyone, thanks for watching. My name is Nikki LaFoyle, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a bandana that fixes to your dog's collar. So you don't have to worry about tying a bandana around their neck, and you can keep them looking fresh and stylish. So this project is super simple and easy, and as always, there is a PDF with full instructions for you to download. You'll find that link in the description of this video. And so you can download that and save it for later. But if you are watching live and you have any questions or comments for me, you can type them into the comments section and I will see those. And there's also um, a QR code on your screen that you can scan to download the pattern, super easy. So for supplies for this project, it's simple, just some fabric. And it does kind of depend on the size of your dog a little bit, but even for bigger dogs, I think a fat quarter or a quarter yard of fabric will probably work for you. If you have a really little pooch, you might be able to find scraps in your stash that will work for this project. But because our pups are all different and unique and special, we're going to draw a pattern for your specific size of dog using the measurements from the collar. So let's jump right in. The measurements that you'll need to take are the length of the collar, not from end to end, but we're gonna go from the end of this buckle, right here, that point, over to where this loop comes out, um, the, the loop that your, your dog tag goes on and the loop that you clip the leash into. We want that to still stay out of the, the bandana so that you can clip a leash on. So it's going to, we're gonna go from this point here at the loop and measure over to the end of that buckle. And mine is 11 inches, so jot that down somewhere. The other measurement you're going to need is the width of the buckle hardware. So I say measure the width of the widest hardware. Sometimes that's this piece, that's your, your um, lengthen and shorten piece hardware piece um, to make the collar like tighter and looser. Sometimes that's wider, sometimes the buckle itself is wider. So whatever is the widest thing that the, the bandana is gonna have to slide over the collar, measure that. So mine is three quarters of an inch. And whatever your measurement is, don't be afraid to round up either if you're at like an eighth of an inch. Just round up. You want to make sure that this opening on the bandana is going to be able to slide over your collar. Round up if, a little bit if you need to, but we're also adding a quarter inch to that width measurement. Um, so jot that down somewhere. And then we're going to start drawing the pattern. So I'm going to swap my camera over so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So if you have a small dog, an eight and a half by 11 sheet might work for you, or you might need to get a bigger paper. This is just um, some extra like butcher paper. Um, you can use newspaper if you need to. So you wanna start by drawing your line for the length of your collar. So this is my 11 inch line. And then at each end of the line, I wanna draw a perpendicular line according to that uh, width calculation we did. So my buckle was three quarter inches wide. I added a quarter. So that gave me one inch. I'm going to draw, draw a one inch line from the each end of this line here. So perpendicular line, one inch on each side. Now we want to find the center of our long line here. So the center of an 11 inch line is five and a half. So I'm just gonna mark five and a half right there. And I'm going to draw myself another perpendicular line right in the center here. And this is just a guideline to make sure each side of my triangle shape is equal. So it's symmetrical. So I'm drawing my guideline. Here. Now here is where you've got some wiggle room in the shape and the length of your bandana. 
So if you want it to be kind of shorter or you can bring the point down and make it a little bit longer, a little bit bigger, depending on the size of your dog or whatever you like. And you can um, do some trial and error. You can try and cut out this piece of paper and sort of audition it on your dog's neck and see if that's the length you want. So in the instructions, I mentioned that my the point of my bandana comes down six and three quarter inches. And that was a good size for my dog. And there's a picture of my dog in the PDF. He's a, a rat terrier. So he's like 25, 26 pounds. It's not huge, but he's you know a medium sized dog. And this is a good size bandana for that size of dog. So there's my mark along my guideline, six and three quarter inches down from the upper line. Now I wanna connect that dot over to each of these points, the end points of my one inch line. And that assures me that my little triangle is symmetrical. Now this upper edge here is going to be cut on the fold. So I'm gonna mark that with my double arrow line cut on fold and then my other edges here we're going to need seam allowances and if you are a frequent quilter or you just like using quarter inch seam allowances go ahead and add whatever seam allowance you want to these short edges and to these angled edges i like to use a half inch just because that's what i'm comfortable with so i'm going to extend this upper line half inch on each side and then draw my half inch seam allowance on the short edges and on my angled, my long angled edges. So there are my cutting lines and I've got my seam allowances marked in, cut on the fold. So you're going to cut one of these on the fold. And I like to use a quilting cotton just because it is sturdy and stable and you can wash it really easily. This is going to get quite dirty. So knowing my dog at least. He likes to roll in things, so it's going to get dirty. So here's my, here's what it looks like when it's cut out. You know, you cut it out on the fold, so it looked like a bandana when you cut it out. And on this, on these short edges over here, you want to fold those in. Whatever seam allowance you added to that side, mine was a uh, half inch, so fold that in half inch and press. And we're going to stitch this down. So I want this raw edge to be secured as well. So if you want to, you can, from the right side, you can feel that edge with your finger and you can zigzag stitch from the right side. And that zigzag stitch on the wrong side will trap those raw edges and make sure that that doesn't fray at all as you know, you're sliding your, your dog collar through this bandana and as it's you know being worn by your dog, it's, it's gonna be treated not too gently. So we wanna finish off those seam allowances. So you can zigzag. I'm actually going to take my pinking shears and I'm going to just pink the edge a little bit. And then I'm going to use a straight stitch to stitch that down. So pinking shears help prevent fraying. So we're gonna give that just a little trim. And then I'm going to bring my machine in and from the right side, I'm going to top stitch each of those edges.
So I'm going to top stitch a quarter inch from this fold. That's going to secure those seam allowances down on the wrong side. If you have a fabric that's got like a nice dog print, mine is squirrels, which I thought was hilarious because in his youth, my dog just, he loved watching squirrels and he wanted with every fiber of his being to catch one. Being a rat terrier now, he likes to chase rodents. So, seam allowances are all secured. There's gonna be no fraying there. Now, we are going to fold this with right sides together, and we're going to stitch from this point at the lower edge of our, our opening here, half inch seam allowances or whatever you added, down to the point, pivot at the point, and back up to this other finished edge. I'm going to throw a couple pins in because this angled edge is on the bias, which means it is going to be more prone to pulling and shifting and such. And somewhere along these straight edges, we want to leave an opening. Um, the, these little finished openings up here aren't wide enough for me to pull everything out through there. So I have to leave a little bit of a bigger opening somewhere. So I'm going to mark my openings with a perpendicular pin. So I'm going to leave three or three or so inches along that straight edge. this point we're going to stop with the needle down lift our presser foot and pivot that around and at the opening at the start of the opening I'm going to back stitch so that my seam doesn't come undone when I'm turning this right side out I'm just going to jump over that opening and start again at my other pin and again back stitch to secure and back stitch at my finished edge now I'm, I want to clip across this corner here get rid of that so that there's no bulk in my corner when it gets turned right side out. And I'm actually gonna double clip. So I clipped across that corner and then I'm going to clip a little bit more of that seam allowance. And then reach in through that opening we left and turn this right side out. I'm going to grab my point turner to get into this lower point. Make sure that gets pressed out. 
So now I have my bandana. I'm going to I'm going to take it to the iron and give it a press. But this is I'm going to press the seam out right at the edge. Thank you, Sandra. Sandra watching from Florida. I'm glad you're liking the project. If you have a dog you're going to make this project for, let me know what kind. So if like me, you had a directional print, you're going to have one side that has the print the right way up and the other side is going to be upside down. So make sure when you thread your, your collar through here, you're doing it um, on the side that when you wrap that around and clip it on his neck, that it will be right side up. And I did fussy cut this so that this would be the squirrels would be prominently displayed. So give this a good press. You still have an opening right here. So you have a couple of options. You can take a hand sewing needle and thread and slip stitch that closed. So it'll be a nice invisible stitch. If you like the look of top stitching, you could top stitch um, these straight edges. Just make sure that you don't um, close this opening up anymore. So if you do top stitching, start it maybe down here a little bit. Don't start it right up at the edge because it's really easy for this opening to get too small for your collar hardware to slide through. And if you want, also in the instructions, I mentioned it's optional to stitch a little casing. So you could stitch a little, um, a little tunnel going from the lower point of this opening over to the other lower point of that opening. Just make sure you leave enough room to make that tunnel um, wide enough for your collar to go through because it has the width of this collar hardware that's not only wide this way, but it has some bulk this way, especially if you have a big dog, sometimes the, the collar hardware can be really big and bulky. So you want to make sure if you do that tunnel that you're leaving enough space <clears throat> for that collar to slide through. And I didn't do a tunnel on mine. Um, and sometimes it does start to twist a little bit and turn up, but you can just flatten it back down. It's not a big deal. Or you can do that tunnel if you would like. So there is your dog bandana handkerchief that I cannot wait to put this on my dog. His name is Finley and he's 15 years old, so he can no longer chase the squirrels, unfortunately, but he can still watch them. So I'll switch my camera back around really quick. So this is a quick and fast project, quick and fast, quick and easy. Um, Trudy has five dogs. Wow, golden retriever, two beagles, and two lab mixes. That is fantastic. I always wanted to have just a gaggle of dogs running around. I've had two at once in my life. That's the most dogs I have had. Um, Sandra has a chihuahua and a lab. Fantastic. A very different sized um, bandanas you'll be making for those. So here's mine. Um, I didn't press mine yet. You definitely want to press yours. But here's mine threaded onto the collar. So there he is. And then, so this is still out so that I can still clip his leash on him. So there will be his new snazzy outerwear. So Susan will be making some for her to be shown. How wonderful. I'm so glad you watched this video. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the project. Um, if you have a small dog, use up some of your scraps or find a really cute dog themed or pet themed um, fabric to make this project 
for your four-legged friend. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Nikki LaFoyle. I hope you have a great day. Bye.